Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today I'll be creating this procedural brush metal material in Blender. This material is very customizable and you can change almost everything to get exactly what you want. Here I've created a node group with all the settings that you're going to need. The roughness, the scale of the brush metal, the glossiness, all of that you can change with these settings. There are two color options here, you have a base color and then you have a random color. If you change the base color to something other than the random color, you're going to get some really interesting effects, as you can see on screen. You can also change the scratches on the surface. If you want thicker scratches, you're going to want to turn this down. If you want the bump to be more, just turn that all the way up, and you can get a lot of variation. If you want to play with this node group yourself, the link is in the description. You can either get it for free, or if you're feeling generous, any donations is very much appreciated. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. The first thing you're going to want to do is download the starter blend file. The link is in the description. This just has a sphere, a camera, and an HDR already set up so we don't have to waste any time setting that up. Once you have it downloaded and open, just come over here and then click new. This will create a new material and we can see it right here. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is change the metallic. Since we're creating a metallic material, we want to turn this all the way up to a value of 1. The specular might give you some weird edges along the side, so I'm going to turn that all the way down to zero. We're not going to need that for this material. Next up, let's create the brush effect. You're also going to want to enable the Node Wrangler add-on if you haven't done that. If you've never used this add-on before, definitely enable it because it's very useful for creating materials. So make sure that is enabled and you should be good to go. If I press Shift A, I can then add in a texture and then a noise texture and we'll place it here. Let's take a look at this by pressing Z and going into Rendered View, and if we have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, I can Control shift left click on this noise texture to preview exactly what it looks like. What we're going to do is we're going to stretch the noise texture so it actually looks like brush metal. To do that, select this and press Control T to add in a mapping and a texture coordinate node. We're going to be taking the object coordinates and plugging that into the mapping, and then we'll drag this underneath here. Next, what we're going to do is change the scale in the X value. If we drag this up really high, you're already going to see that brush metal effect. You might notice though, if you take a look closely, that you have some repeating patterns along the lines. You can see this a lot more if I add in a plane. You can see we have a lot of repeating lines of noise. So we're going to turn down the Y scale down to 0.1. Once we do that, you should see the lines get stretched out and that looks a lot better. Now before we continue with this brush metal material, here is a quick word from our sponsor Skillshare. You've heard of Skillshare by now, they're an online learning platform with thousands of classes to choose from. Some of the topics include animation, illustration, graphic design, there are even a lot of Blender classes as well. One class I can recommend is Advanced Video Editing with Premiere Pro. Jordy's way of teaching this class is very entertaining and I enjoyed it quite a bit. I edit all of my tutorials using Premiere Pro and sometimes it takes a long time to edit because I don't know a lot of the shortcuts and techniques. This class has allowed me to edit faster and create higher quality videos. Skillshare is specifically designed for learning. That means with a premium membership you get access to every single class on their platform with no ads so you can watch and learn uninterrupted. And a lot of the classes are under 60 minutes so it's easy to fit into any schedule. So here is the deal that I have for you today. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get one month of the premium membership on Skillshare for free. So you can start learning whatever you want to right now. So what are you waiting for? Click the link down below and start learning something new today. Thanks again to Skillshare for helping me pay rent this month. Now let's get back into the tutorial. Now let's change some of the settings in the noise texture. The first thing I'm going to do is the scale. I'm going to set that up to a value of 6 just so the lines are a little bit smaller and the detail amount I'm going to drag all the way up to 16. The roughness we can drag up as well to 0.6. This will just add another layer of detail to the lines and the distortion you can also drag that up to 0.1. At the moment if we take a look at the plane one more time you'll notice the lines are very very straight and there's not much going on with them. So to fix that, we're going to add another layer of noise on top of that to break up the lines so they're a little bit less straight. This is very easy to do. We're first going to select the noise texture and shift D it and place it here. We're going to be adding some noise to the vector location of this noise texture. I'm also going to add in a color and then a mix RGB and place it in between the mapping and the noise texture. 
We'll then take the color value, actually the factor value from the noise and plug it into the bottom input. Then we'll take the object, plug that into the noise texture. Right away, you'll notice that the lines are a lot less even and they're kind of all over the place. We're gonna turn down the strength of this by setting the scale up a little bit. Let's go with a value of eight and the roughness, I'm gonna go back down to 0.5 and the distortion, I'm gonna set down to zero. This factor value in the mix node now controls how much noise is gonna be in those lines. You're gonna to want to set this a little bit lower because if you go too high, it's just gonna look like this. So I think a value of about 0.2 to 0.3 is probably a good option. Let's go with a value of 0.2. Now let's set up the color. I'm gonna press Shift A and add in a converter and a color ramp and we'll place it here. With these two handles, we're gonna go with a gray. I'm also gonna drag these a little bit closer together, something like that. And then for this handle, we're gonna drag the value up so it's a little bit lighter. And then for this handle, we're gonna go darker. Something like that will look pretty good. Let's take the color from the color ramp and plug that into the base color of the principal shader and then control shift on this. Let's go into camera view and see what this looks like. I'm going to hide the plane once again. And here is our result. This is looking pretty good so far, but I also wanna be able to change the color later. So to do that, I'm gonna press Shift A and add in another color and then mix RGB and we'll place it here. We're gonna set this down to multiply. And now if the factor is all the way up, this bottom value now controls the overall color of our material. I'm gonna drag that up to white. Then if I go over to the blue, you can see it changes the color. We're just gonna leave it at a nice gray somewhere around here. Now that our brush metal effect is done, let's add in the noise and change the roughness of our material. I'm gonna press Shift A and add in a new texture, and this is going to be a Musgrave texture. Let's Control Shift left click on this to see what it looks like. If we change the scale down, let's go with a value of about 0.1 for this. Then if we drag the detail all the way up to 16 and the dimensions down to 0.1, we're gonna get some really cool noise patterns in our texture. Then what we're gonna to want to do is take the object coordinates from our texture coordinate and plug that into the vector of the musgrave. Then this happens and we get a lot more noise into our scene. Now let's go ahead and change the color. I'm gonna press Shift A, add in a new color ramp. We'll place it right here. And for this, it's gonna be very similar to this color ramp up top. This one on the left is gonna be a nice gray, a pretty dark gray somewhere around here. And then the handle on the right side is also gonna be a gray, but it's gonna be a little bit lighter somewhere around there is probably good. Then we'll plug this directly into the roughness of our uh, principled shader. Now, if we control shift left click on this, you should see this effect. It might be a little bit subtle, but we can change this by adding in a converter and a math node and placing it here. Let's set this down to multiply. This bottom value now controls the roughness. If you drag it a lot higher, we're gonna get a lot of roughness into our scene. If you drag it lower, it's gonna be a lot more smooth. I found that a value of about like 2.9 looks pretty good. So you have a little bit of roughness, but you also have some glossiness. Now to get that random color, it's very simple. All we have to do is duplicate this multiply node and place it here. Then if we take the height from our Musgrave texture and plug that into the factor, this bottom value now controls the color of that roughness. So if I drag this lower, you can see it's going to change it. I'm gonna set that back down to zero and drag the color all the way up to white. Our material is coming along just fine, but the next step is to add in some scratches and bump. We're gonna be adding in the scratches first and then we'll add in the bump. So first off, to add in scratches, there are a couple different ways, but the way we're gonna be using is with a wave texture. Let's place that right here. Let's take a look at this by control shift left clicking on it. I want the lines of our wave texture to be a lot bigger, so I'm gonna set the scale of this down to a value of one. The distortion, this is the value that we're gonna to want to change. This will add in a lot of randomness to the lines. Let's set that up to 25. The detail amount, you might think that we're gonna turn this up, but we're actually gonna turn that down to a value of zero. The detail scale, that is what we're gonna be changing. Let's drag that up to a value of five. As for the detail roughness, this is going to just add a little bit of another level of detail. Let's set this to 0.75 and enter. 
Now you might be thinking that this doesn't really look that good, but don't worry, we're also gonna be taking the same technique up here with the noise texture and the mix to change the vector location of this noise texture. We're gonna be doing that with the waves. So select the noise texture and the mix and shift D it. Then with the texture coordinate, we're actually gonna be taking the generated output, plugging that into the top input of the mix, and then the color is gonna go into the wave texture. And as you can see already, we're getting a lot more detail into our texture. First off, the scale of this, I'm gonna drag down to a value of six. And for the roughness, we're gonna drag that to 0.6. And then as for the distortion, this will just kind of distort the overall noise pattern. If we drag that up to 0.1, that might give it a cool look. To control the texture a little bit more and make it a little bit more sharp, we're gonna be adding in a color ramp. So press Shift A, add in a color ramp and place it here. We're also gonna be flipping this, so click on this little drop down arrow and click on flip color ramp, and then we're gonna drag the white value much closer to the black value. This will clamp down on those lines and make the black parts a lot more sharp. Somewhere around there will look pretty good. Our scratches are looking great so far, but they're covering the entire mesh. Now let's add in a noise texture to control where they're located on this. So to do that, let's add in another noise texture. We'll place it right here then add in another converter and color ramp. Let's take the factor of the color ramp, plug that into the factor. Then to actually combine these, I'm gonna be adding in a math node and setting the mode down to subtract. This bottom color ramp is gonna go into the bottom input. Then the top one is gonna go into the top. And then let's take a look at this by control shift left clicking on it. We're also gonna to want to clamp this value so the ranges are from zero to one. If we uncheck this, you're gonna notice that some parts are a lot darker. This means that they're going in the negative direction. So if we clamp that, it'll just bring everything from zero to one. As for this noise texture, we're gonna change a couple of settings here. Firstly, the scale of the noise, I'm gonna drag up to a value of eight. Let's take a look at this to see what it looks like. For the detail, let's drag that all the way up to 16. And I think that's probably good. Then if we take the black value from the color ramp and drag this up, we're gonna get some random parts of our mesh. Then if we take a look at this, you'll notice that some parts are gone and some parts are there. Another effect that you can do with this color ramp is if we change the mode from linear over to constant and then drag the white value closer, you're gonna get a lot more sharper scratches as you can see here. So we're gonna bring the white value closer to the black to make them a little bit smaller. Somewhere around there looks pretty good. And there is our result. If you wanna change the pattern of this, you can switch the noise texture to 4D and then drag the W slider up a little bit and that will give you some random variation in the scratches. To add the scratches to the normal input of the principled shader, it's actually very easy. We're first going to press Shift A and add in a vector and then a bump node and we'll place it here. We're gonna be taking the subtract and plugging that directly into the height. Then if we take the normal into the normal of the principled shader, let's control shift left click on this to check it out. Here is the result that we're getting. Currently the scratches are actually extruding outwards. We don't want that, we want them to be going in. So all you have to do is click invert and now the scratches are actually going into the surface of the brush metal. I also want the brush pattern up here to be in the bump as well. So to add that in, all we need to do is add in another math node and then take the color ramp from the brush metal and plug that into the bottom input of this. And then here is the result that we're getting. The strength of this is currently way too high. So let's drag that down to a value of 0.2. And as for the distance, that's also currently way too high. So let's drag that down as well. Let's go with a value of 0.01 and enter. One quick tip, if you wanna change the noise pattern of this muskrape texture, it's very easy. You, if you just switch this over to the 4D mode, this W slider now changes how it looks. So I can change it up as much as I want and get a different noise pattern. Then if I take a look at the principled shader, we can see that the noise pattern is like this. If I drag it up higher, it's going to randomly change what that noise looks like. So that is a quick way to change what the noise looks like for the roughness. And there it is, here is our complete node setup for you to take a look at, and just in case you got anything wrong or your uh, material looks a little bit weird, you can screenshot it right here. Now let's go over this material one more time so you understand exactly what is happening. The top part right here is where the brush metal effect is. If I control shift left click on the color ramp, here is the result. The mix node and the noise texture is 
is making this noise texture a little bit more random and it's breaking up these straight lines. Underneath that we have the roughness. This is a rough map right here and this is plugged in directly into the roughness of the principal shader. What it's doing is it's taking the white values and adding roughness and where the gray parts are, that is going to be a lot more glossy. If we take a look at it, that is the result that we're getting. As for the scratches down here, we're taking a wave texture, adding another layer of noise on top of that, then using a noise texture to take away some parts of the scratches. Then we're combining that with the brush metal, with the bump, and then plugging that into the principled shader to get the bump on the entire thing. And there you go, that is how you create a brush metal effect in Blender. I know there are a lot of tutorials on a brush metal material, but I thought this one added another level of detail with the scratches and the roughness, so I wanted to share it. Thank you very much for watching this. If you made it all the way to the end and created your own material, make sure to send it to me on Instagram at BlenderMadeEZ. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing because I upload Blender tutorials all the time. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.